in this uh, session we are going to uh, deal with the long term assets and liabilities so as such our focus will be more driven towards uh, uh, the fixed assets both tangible as well as intangible and also we are focusing on uh, uh, the liabilities uh, aspect wherein the major focus i am looking at is with respect to the leases because they are also in a way related to the long term assets we will uh, see the benefits of leases over uh, purchases and how these uh, uh, assets as well as the leasings are considered as a part of the financial statements how are the financial statements affected because of all the changes and various mechanisms used to deal with uh, the assets like different depreciation methods or the impairments or revaluations all these uh, various things that are uh, happening on the assets as well as various leasing methods how do they impact your financial statement that is what we are trying to uh, look at in this uh, entire session so just to get uh, started into it the initial thing that we are talking of is capitalization versus expensing so any any long term purchase we are making or any purchase which we are making for the business it can go either into the pnl statement or income statement as an expense it can go into the income statement as an expense or it can go into the balance sheet as an asset so if it is going into the pnl statement as an expense we are calling that that particular uh, purchase is expensed if it is going into the balance sheet as an asset we are saying that it is capitalized and so whenever we are capitalizing it for that particular cost we are not treating it as an expense in the pnl statement so it is going as an asset in the balance sheet so from that perspective we see that the total assets of the company will grow up and uh, because uh, expenses are not existing or for that particular uh, portion which has been treated as an asset because it's the purchase value instead of being going as a <coughs> pnl statement as an expense we are taking into the balance sheet as a capitalized asset so again this is not applicable to each and every purchase we'll talk about a few of them especially long term purchases which have a useful life of more than 1 year that is where these kind of situations will come into picture so the whenever i am capitalizing it the total assets will grow up the expenses will come down right and because the expenses are coming down wherever the expenses are down the net income is uh, planned to go up and that the net income is going up this net income is what will go as a retained earnings on the balance sheet into the uh, into the liabilities and owner equity section which means the retained earnings will go up which means the overall equity will go up so these are the ups that are associated with uh, the expansion uh, the expensing part <coughs> sorry capitalizing over the expensing right because if it is capitalized the expense is decreased in that particular year which will result in net income going up retained earnings going up, going up and even the equity also going up and when we look at uh, capitalizing because it's going as a part of the asset in the cash flow statement the increase or decrease is treated as the cash flow from investment activities so there will be any purchase of an asset will go as decrease in the cash flow from 
investing activities but it may not impact the cash flow from operations activities at all but in case i have expensed that purchase it would definitely result in bringing down my cash flow from operations again these are very interesting things to consider if we see the formula of free cash flow to the firm or equity it focuses more and more on cash flow from operations are uh, uh, and at the same time let's say if i want to evaluate the the quality of earnings of the firm there also we are looking at cash flow from operations rather than the other two areas so when i am doing an expensing i am seeing that the cash flow from operations will be down but when i am uh, doing a 